In this episode of the online classroom, we're going to look at life cycle cost. The life cycle cost is the cost of the system over its entire life cycle, including things like the operation, the distribution, the maintenance, the training and supply. For our car comparison, software and product distribution costs aren't as relevant and we'll assume that the cars have been fully tested, that there's no training and that there's no supply support cost. This leaves the acquisition, the operations, maintenance and the refinement and disposal costs to be considered. In our car example, acquisition costs are things like the purchase, on-road and stamp duty. These are things that you'll probably pay upfront for. Operations costs are things that you'll pay for throughout the life of the vehicle. Things like refueling, registration, insurance, parking and roadside assistance. Maintenance costs are costs that you could plan for but aren't necessarily essential to the operations. Things like regular services and tyres. The last category are refinements and disposal costs. And in this category, you could consider things like major repairs and the resale value. Because the two cars are very similar, we'll ignore the parking costs, which are likely to be the same, and the cost of tires, which are likely to be the same or very similar over the life cycle. If we go about constructing a table of all of the costs over the vehicle's lifetime, we end up doing quite a lot of research to find values to put into each of the cells. One interesting comparison is the price of the acquisition costs, which have been quoted with the purchase, on-road and stamp duty all included. The Nissan Leaf is significantly more expensive than the Nissan Pulsar and it is said it's because of the high cost of the batteries. I've used the refueling values from an earlier online classroom. Registration in the ACT is based on weight and the Nissan Pulsar fits into the 1300 kilogram category. The Nissan Leaf fits into the 1500 kilogram category but it does have a 20% reduction on the price of the registration component and so it's not that much more expensive per year. Insurance for both of the vehicles are fairly similar and the roadside assistance is the same for both cars. The RACQ puts the regular service cost per kilometre rates which makes it really easy to compare over time and it rates the Nissan Leaf as a slightly lower 6.5 cents per kilometre regular service cost. We'll assume that over the lifetime which in this case will take to be 10 years, that there are no major repairs required on either vehicle, but an example might be replacing the engine or replacing the battery bank. Looking at prices of 10-year-old Pulsars and 10-year-old Priuses, the resale value is pretty similar at about $5,000 each. Using our around town estimation of 13,500 kilometers per year, the Pulsar will consume a bit over a thousand litres per year and at $1.52 per litre that works out to be about $1,600 per year. The Nissan Leaf works out to be approximately 2,300 kilowatt hours and at 15 cents per kilowatt hour that calculates to be approximately $350 per year. Converting the regular services to a per year cost brings the Pulsar in at about $935 per year and the Nissan Leaf in at just under $900 per year. The roadside assistance package includes a $55 establishment fee which will include in the acquisition cost rather than as an ongoing cost. And of course the resale value is money that you'll get back at the end rather than an expense. In this life cycle cost analysis there are a number of factors that we haven't considered such as the changes of pricing that might happen with competitive pricing. For example if we shopped around for a cheaper deal or if we signed up for cheaper power or actively shopped around for fuel prices. It doesn't consider the role of inflation or price fluctuations. It doesn't consider things like the user behavior change over time. So for example, what happens if our estimation of kilometers traveled per year increases or decreases over that time? It doesn't include things like additional trips, especially the trips that we had in our back of the envelope classroom, such as driving to Sydney, which is outside the range of the electric vehicle. It doesn't include the major servicing or replacement of batteries. Both cars come with a five year warranty. And so for, for the second five years, there is a risk of a major service being required. And it doesn't consider the different ways that you might purchase the vehicle, such as leasing or buying outright and the interest if you take out a loan. There are a number of data sources required to compile all of this information and it's worthwhile to note that these prices are likely to change. That wraps up the Lifecycle Cost Online Classroom.